Hi. So I'm going to give it a few moments for folks to log in, but this is going to be the latest episode of What's in My Studio. Awesome. George is on. All right. So I'm going to give a few moments for everyone to get logged in, but I'm going to go ahead and add George into this live chat and let's get started. Hey. hey, how you doing? How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm <laughs> so glad you could come in today and do this with me. So we'll like let people slowly trickle in, but we only have an hour on Instagram anyway, so we can right. adjust and ebb and flow as we go. Okay, um, okay. <laughs> so yes. I might look away every so often. It's just because I've got the computer set up. So that way, if we get any questions, I forget. I wanted to write everything down and be super awesome. prepared, you know, bring out my inner A plus student from my school Ooh. days. Yes, know? yes, of course. Yeah, that I'm first generation, when your parents are like, <laughs> you need to make A's. I'm ready. <laughs> A plus on this live stream. Let's go. <laughs> yes, yes. A plus live stream. Look, Instagram sends out grades. You need to know that. There you go. <laughs> Oh but, man. Um, let's let's just kind of start a little slow. George, do you okay. want to introduce yourself and okay. tell everyone who you are? Yeah. Um, well, my name is George F. Baker the third. I am a illustrator, a muralist, and a conversation creator at the end of the day. And um what I was born in Omaha, Nebraska, raised in Detroit, and been living here since 2003 and loving it this is like my home now honestly yeah yes <laughs> now you're an atlantan mm -hmm. That's it. oh yeah Detroit doesn't get any claim to you we oh, no. officially a, made it not at yeah. all we pushed them to the side i've, I've been uh, i've been a man of the peach for a long time so <laughs> oh i like that man of the peach i might have to steal that from you it's okay it just came off the top of my head so hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but oh, um man. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about your art and all of the things. I have had the immense pleasure of being able to see you work and grow over the last few years as an artist. Um, but for those who don't know, George does some work with like ABV Gallery for live doodles. Yeah. He's done a belt line or belt line. Mm -hmm. Words are saying he's <laughs> done a mural on the belt line. Um, You've probably seen his work around town and yeah. not recognized it. We got to see, I've gotten to see George do some work during the Super Bowl when it was here in Atlanta. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> talk to us a little bit. Where are you started? Where are you going? Mm. Um, well, as you said, I've, I've really just started like on my, on my independent muralism illustration career for like the past two years. Um, but it, before that, I was probably like a, I was a, practicing uh, graphic designer for numerous years. Um, but I've, I've kind of fell into doing this, into doing murals and been loving it ever since. And it's probably been one of the most fruitful things in my career, uh, just seeing how people kind of respond to to the things that I, that I create for them. You know, I, I really love creating for the public eye and um, making large scale murals is probably one of the best ways to do it. Um, so for me, it is, it is, I guess my next steps will be like continuing to get larger in, in, in scale, but also in impact. Um, I'm trying to bring, I'm trying to bring as many people into, into doing murals because a lot of people kind of get blocked with like the scale part of it. And they feel like, oh, I can't do that. Oh, that seems too big. I just started doing this. And I'm a firm believer in YouTube University and Google Tech. So I've learned everything, everything that I've possibly like been able to do has been because I've, I've learned online or I've learned from friends. So I just want to be able to kind of give off all the knowledge that I know to, to young artists, mid-level artists, artists that are in transitions so that more people can kind of uh, work this medium. Yeah. Yeah. So you said the big scale is kind of what throws you off. I know from watching <laughs> you, like, and from my own personal work, that 
the larger it is, the more nervous I get. I'm like, oh, what if I'm too close to it? And then I like put a line in the wrong place. How yeah. do you plan it out? Oh man, there's uh, there's numerous ways to do it. Um, one of the simplest ways, honestly, is using a projector. Um, okay. I, yeah, which is kind of crazy. I'm like, before I got into doing murals, I was always like, how do you scale that up? Do you just like draw it and kind of fix it from there? Um, but one way to do it quick and easy is a projector. Another way is um, using a doodle grid. Um, okay. Yeah. For which, those who don't know, can you tell us what that is? Yeah. Yeah. So with a doodle grid, all that you're really doing is you go up to the wall, you just write a a whole bunch of nonsensical numbers, letters, uh, shapes onto the wall to fill out the space. You then take a picture of of that wall and then take it into Illustrator and place your image right on top so that you now have a gridded image to work from. Okay. Yeah, so you can easily scale it by just kind of watching what uh watching where your lines fall on the picture for the shapes and the letters. So yeah. And like nice. that was that was something that I that I learned from just doing some studying of uh the artist ten hundred out in Seattle. So yeah. Very cool. I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea. I I got to say, from a film background, you know, we use projectors for a lot of things, but not necessarily to recreate artwork on other surfaces. Yeah. So I really like that. Besides, I, I mean, people can get a hold of all kinds of projectors and things yeah. these days. So, like, you know, very accessible. Yes, incredibly accessible. Yeah, I'm like, so, I just found out a $99 projector that plugs into your iPhone. That's great. There Once you go. Again, the tools. <laughs> so someone asked um, in our comment section where they can see your artwork. And we'll circle back mm. around to this later. But for those of you that aren't familiar and want to go check out George and come back to this live stream, go to at GFB3 and yes. you'll be able to see his work. Yeah. Um, but continuing back to our conversation before I get too sidetracked. Let's talk about mediums and things. Obviously, we're with Sam Flax. So we've got to talk mm -hmm. about some art supplies and things and where, what brands we like, what color saturations you look for. How do you determine mm -hmm. what you're using? Oh, man, uh, that's a really good question. Um, for me, I, I, colors are probably my, my favorite aspect of any type of design. Um, it's kind of my way of rewarding myself at the, at the end of figuring out the composition or even just the idea of what I want to do by saying, okay, I can start to get crazy with colors. Um, so with that, two of the things that I really love to use materials wise is actually, I have things set up. Pasta oh. markers. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. God, I love I a good pasta marker. Always. And I probably have uh, way too many. But in fact, no, I don't. There's there's no, no such, such thing. thing. As, no, because uh, let me see what else that I have. Oh, man, I have a huge uh, amount <laughs> of markers. That's beautiful. I don't play. Yeah. So I'm like, I love those markers mainly because they, they lay down. Uh, colors so so vividly, highly saturated. Um, they work for a variety of, of media, mediums that you're painting on or drawing on. Um, so you can do it on a piece of paper. I've used it on wood panels. I've even used it on um, concrete to sign some of my murals. Um, okay. it's, it's incredibly versatile. Comes in a variety of, of nib nib sizes from really, really thin to really incredibly fat. Um, no fat shaming when it comes to the markers, though. We, we don't do that. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, so those are some of my favorite uh, materials, just just those, those Posca paint pens. And then also, I absolutely love my Montana Black and also my Montana Gold uh, spray yeah. paints. So beautiful colors lays down incredibly well when it when it comes to spray paint and um it's just beautiful and plus i just love the design like as a former graphic design student 
they had me immediately. So <laughs> I understand that. That's definitely a well designed can. It's smooth, it's sleek, and the product inside relates so well to the visual on the outside. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It takes a, a long time to master. I'm still in that process of trying to develop my skill, but it's such a, a fun and quick way to kind of um, start laying down paint and, and figuring out the design and figuring out where you want to go. So highly recommend. <laughs> okay. So I have a couple of questions in terms of like when you're using the products, so obviously the murals mm -hmm. get really large scale. Um, mm -hmm. I think the smallest one I've seen you do was the square stacks over here in Cabbage Town. Yes. And I know you did a combination of things to get that done. But as mm -hmm. far as wear and tear and the longevity of this, mm -hmm. how long do these products last you? Do you have to buy new supplies every time you do a mural? Or can you make a can last multiple rounds? Can a marker go more than a couple of weeks? Like, what are we looking at? Because if you're going on concrete, yeah. <laughs> you might have a little wear and tear on those nibs. Yeah, yeah. True, true, true. I'm like, there's a little bit of wear and tear, but they, they pretty much last uh they, they they hold up pretty strongly as far as uh the, the posca markers go surprisingly in, incredibly strong uh incredibly strong nibs a uh, very weird sentence to say um but the great thing about those nibs is that you can also flip them around just in case you know if, okay. if one size gets a little bit weathered you just flip it around and, and go for it as far as the spray paint goes um i normally do buy um new spray paints for each mural but i'm i'm always left with like a little bit a little bit of over so i normally take that into any type of new project so um yeah i'm like they, they last they they last for a pretty good bit now on very large murals i've, I've ran through uh <laughs> my fair share of cans so yeah yeah i'm sure the yeah. local art stores love to see you come in every time you're at sam's flat they're like yeah. That's our man. Exactly. They're like, oh, you again. Yes. Come on. <laughs> yes. Uh, and, and I love, absolutely love going to Sam Flax. It's always an enjoyable experience. People is all, are always helpful. They, they always have the, a mass amount of the spray paint that I need. I'm never like wondering or wanting anything there. Yeah. My honest opinion. <laughs> yeah, I fully respect and love that. I mean, yes. Um, yeah, let's kind of mm -hmm. keep circling back around. I have obviously a long list of questions that I'm like, <laughs> what do people not know about you that I know about you that we can oh. come back? We've already mentioned like your preferred brands and stuff. I kind of want to talk a little bit about what inspires you to create the art you do. Mm. I, for those of people who have seen your work, you play a lot with. Um, with certain color palettes and you play a lot with like the images of like mm -hmm. different people. Um, where'd that start out? How'd you decide um, to do that? Well, I, I would definitely say it probably, it probably came because of, of honestly, my, my, my childhood. Um, I traveled around a lot. Um, like I said, I was born in Omaha, Nebraska, moved to Detroit, stayed in Hilton Head, South Carolina, uh, Buford, Savannah, and then, you know, Atlanta is where I've ended up. But through that entire process, I've been able to just meet and experience and expose myself to a variety of different people and just ways of being. And it just, it made me really fall in love with, honestly, with people and, and how they kind of create themselves and, and make themselves new every single day in that how everybody is living in their one unique way. And it's that that to me is always a joyous occasion. Um, so any any type of any type of interaction that I have with a person just it, it honestly fills me with, with joy because I'm getting an exposure to a, a totally new variety of, of views and ideas. And that's the type of energy that I love to put into to my mural. So a lot of a lot of the sayings that I have are just things that I've learned from from the variety of people that have come in, in contact with me. Like, I'm, I'm a firm believer, like, I, I am only myself because of all the people that I've ever interacted with. And That's a beautiful sentiment. Yeah, I'm like, it is, it's, it's the truth. It, it really is the truth. I would not be here without people. 
And I try to acknowledge that as much as possible with my work, you know? So, yeah, yay people. <laughs> I just realized no one can see, but I was coughing. We got oh, okay. <laughs> Love um, it. Yeah, you know, I, I forget sometimes where the camera's cutting off because I'm looking at you <laughs> in the bottom half of the screen. But in terms of like people inspiring you and stuff like that, do you mm. tell them, do you ever tell the people who have inspired certain pieces that it's them or do you like to kind of leave it open to interpretation for everyone in your life? Um, I actually tell people. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I try to do my best to... Um, to let people know how much I, I do value and appreciate them or, or that they, they're in my work or, or I, use, I use this one moment to, to kind of illustrate the entire piece. And because I just, I want them to kind of feel connected to it too. And, and to also to know how much I appreciate them. Um, like for example, I, I, the, I did a mural for the Beltline last year called Make Friends. And um, it was a large scale piece with all these different faces kind of together, smiling, kind of enjoying each other and just being around each other. And it was something that was, was inspired by both of my parents. Um, because I've had to move around so much, um, one of the things that they, they told me that I had to do to kind of survive in all these new environments and new schools I, I, I was in was I had to make friends and like actual genuine friendships. Uh, and, you know, I, I got to tell them, I got to tell, you know, both my parents that they're the reason that this mural is even here today, not just because, you know, carrying me for nine months and, <laughs> and, and putting me into this world, but, and also just, giving me that, that sentiment and that little bit of safety helped me not only then, but also in what I was doing there. So, yeah, I try to let people know as much as possible. I like that. <laughs> so I, I kind of want to bring this up. Obviously, mm -hmm. your handle is GFB3, mm -hmm. and I introduced you as Georgia Fager the third. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not always introducing people by their full names for the audience to know. <laughs> I kind of want to talk a little bit about your branding and how yeah. your personality reflects both in who you are as a being as well as like, because you talked about the sayings being very personal to you and like mm -hmm. connected with the people around you. How does your name and how you present yourself reflect in the same way? <laughs> well, the funny thing about that is that uh, I, I say my full name because it's something that it's something that my parents made me do uh, pretty much since I could talk. They would tell me whenever you meet somebody new, make sure that you say your whole entire name because you want to let them know not only who you are, but where you come from. So I've, I've just done that so consistently that, that I guess people acknowledge it as branding, but I just acknowledge it as like, that's what my parents told me to do. I was trying to be <laughs> obedient. <laughs> I was trying to avoid as much trouble as possible. So I said, okay, George F. Baker III. And, you know, though it was weird when I was a kid, uh, I feel like uh, it, it's something that I've really loved and grown into as an adult. And <laughs> I just, <laughs> I don't know. I, I really appreciate it, you know? Um, and And I just hope that it inspires other people to have, like, more more love of, of their full names. I, I don't know. I'm like it's 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 something yeah. that um yeah I'm just very proud of. I'm very proud of every single aspect of my name. Um yeah. Oh another point on that. Uh most people don't know what my middle name is. Uh George F. Baker the third, the F stands for Foster. So it's a little secret point right there. <laughs> nice. Someone asked if you're from a military family. Technically, yes. Yes. A military family. Both of my parents were in the army. Uh, but the reason why I transferred around so much uh, was because I'm a child of divorce, like many people in America. So, um, yeah, I'm like, but that was the main reason why I was born in Omaha, Nebraska. So, yeah. Okay. Shout out to the military. <laughs> so, 
Uh, I want to circle back. You've been doing t-shirts every so often too that also mm-hmm. say foster on them. Yes. Can you talk a little bit to us about how the t-shirts started? Because they're not exactly a segue into murals some of us know, but mm-hmm. where does the connection lie? The connection lies in that was actually my very first dream um, as a teenager was to create my my own clothing line. So <laughs> What uh, I came up with my my very first cl- clothing line back in like whew, seventh grade. It was called Classic, and because I wanted to do it so much, I wanted to learn how to actually make the art. So that got me interested in uh, graphic design, and I was like, "Well, shoot! When I go to college, I want to actually make T-shirts. So let me be a graphic designer." And so I majored in that, and and. That transitioned on to me actually pushing things out as Foster, as as my middle name. Um, and it's it's one of those things that for me, I appreciate the, the meaning behind Foster more than it just being my middle name. It's it basically means to to raise to raise people around you and to to push people and to push people and to build them up from from wherever that they are to become whatever that they want to be so I'm like it, it's it's my it's the t-shirts are basically my avenue of basically doing many murals on people's chests <laughs> and having them rock it all around and you know share these messages that I have with anybody that they come into contact with have you done any t-shirts as of lately since you've been transitioning to larger scale work yes uh I have a couple of uh I have a couple of T-shirts actually in development right now for a a few projects. Um, one in particular that I guess I, I can really talk about is I'm going to be uh, live painting a mural on Saturday with Marta at uh, Clayton at the the brand new Clayton County uh, bus transit system. So we're going to be doing a collaboration T-shirt together. So. Yeah, it's going to be, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. (laughs) I was really excited as soon as they said, yeah, we're we're thinking about making t-shirts. I said, yes, (laughs) I know exactly what to do. (laughs) Great, we can come full circle in that way. T-shirts, murals, just keep the rotation. Exactly. So how do you get public works like this? Do you generally Mm. reach out to people directly or do you wait for grants? How does your Mm. artist struggle survive through covid well, I'm a firm believer in uh, there is no such thing as a or there's no beauty in being a starving artist. So for me personally, I I do my part into looking looking for these opportunities, um, whether that means I'm on Google every day uh, searching up, searching up like keywords like mural call RFQs, which means request for qualifications, or I'm, I'm consistently going to certain sites like uh, Opportunity Arts here in Atlanta, or um, on public artists, sending out proposals. Like, I'm, I'm trying my best to constantly, you know, in, invite more opportunities by the amount of work that I put out. Um, and then also, uh, I cold call people. Like if I'm interested in working with anybody, I'm not, I I don't like waiting. I don't want to wait on, I don't want to wait on you to, to, to get done being busy to find some time to, to talk to me. No, I want to, I want to reach out to you. I want to work with you. Um, I want to paint something on your wall. So I'm going to let you know. Um, So I, I'm like most, I, I, I know most people feel kind of weird about doing that, but I don't mind initiating the conversation. It can be weird, <laughs> but it, it can also lead to some very beautiful moments that you wouldn't have, that you wouldn't have expected and that the person that you're contacting wouldn't have expected. So yeah, I, I'm mostly, I'm every day. Yeah, even right after this uh, phone call, I got or not phone call, but interview. I got a couple of uh, I got a couple of emails I have to send out. Yeah, it's just nice. Hey, you got to invite those types of you. You got to invite that life that you want into your life by the actions that you do. So. So in terms of cold calling, have you ever sent cold call to like 
government and park officials to try and build that relationship within the city? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, be we, we have a, a beautiful thing um, called the Internet. Almost everybody is pretty much everybody is on it. And you can find out the specific people that are are working in the sectors that you need to. So for me, I wanted to do work with the city of Atlanta. So I looked up who was the art director or the the um, procurements director, which is, you know, just a funny word for a buyer. Um, and I would look these things up and try to see who they are. And I would personally contact them. I, you know, most emails are easy to figure out. First name, last name, at whatever company it is. And um, yeah, I've done that for the city of Atlanta. I've actually even done that for um, for Los Angeles. I'm a registered mural artist in Los Angeles. Just, just by in, cold calling and just by cold out. calling. Yeah, I just wanted to know. I wanted to know the process, so I would. I I, I have no shame in not knowing, and. So I, I reach out always. <laughs> nice. So I wanted to talk a little bit about developing your style too. Mm. I know you for having these fun line works and like uh, playing with your colors a lot mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And I'm sure a lot of people do use colors in different ways and stuff, but how do you, how do you determine your color palette every time you go? Oof. Well, that, that is, uh, it's difficult. It, Honestly, it kind of depends on the emotion that I'm that I'm feeling. Um, like, uh, I, I'm like colors to me are, are are such like a beautiful thing that if I'm like if you present if you present a, a color palette that even colors that may not even work together, like if you present that in a very interesting way, it could inspire something beautiful out of a person. So with me, the, the color combinations, I don't know. I've, I've never been asked that question, actually. Um, <laughs> but I do think that it just kind of comes from just all the different things that I've exposed myself to throughout the years. Um, I'm a huge fan of, of artists like Keith Haring, uh, So Me, who is a, a French graphic designer, who I'm like a yeah. huge fan fans of. Um, probably seen his work on old uh, Kanye West videos like Good Life and ooh, what else did he do? He also did the old Kid Cudi video and some house musicians uh, videos. But um, I, I don't I don't try to limit myself when it co comes to colors. Like I just try to like play around and and if it feels right, it feels right. Yeah. <laughs> but as a muralist, if you're working with spray paints and pasta mm -hmm. markers, those colors are already pre-mixed and predetermined. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that that offers a limitation or do you feel like there's a wide enough range in those brands to give you the capability mm -hmm. to create your work? There's a wide enough range in those brands, but also there's opportunities to really mix both. Um, even with the pasta markers, um, at the end of the day, they're just filled with acrylic paint. So all you really, all that you really have to do is kind of overflow the marker a little bit and you can start to, you'll get a nice little puddle of whatever color that you put out. You mix it with another color, you have a brand new color to work with. Um, they even have uh, empty, empty markers that you can fill up with your own, with your own uh, ink that you mixed. And, you can come to create something beautiful. Um, I'm like those limitations, the limitations with with um, Montana and Pasca are really only mental. I'm like, I can figure something out, you know? Um, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in color theory. So really all that you have to do if you want to create some new colors, you know, choose what you want to have around it. And it will literally transform whatever that you're working with. <laughs> nice. So as you're like working and going through things, I've mm -hmm. obviously mentioned a lot of different pieces that have kind of come up over time with your t-shirts and the belt line and mm -hmm. Marta. What do you feel is the the piece that kind of like kick started you off? Like what was that mm. that first piece where you're like, this is what I'm doing. 
this is like definitive of my direction. Is there that? Yes, there, there definitely is. Um, honestly, it was a piece that you were at. I'm still here. It was actually a piece that you were present. Oh, no, okay, I was like it first. Um, okay. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, um, I got a, a low battery message. Um, but it was a piece that you were present for. Um, it was actually the uh, Super Bowl uh, mural that I got to do. Uh, what was that? Oh my, that's almost two years ago. It'll be two years ago in in January. Um, but I before I got the email for that piece, I was in a very crucial moment where I wasn't really getting any type of like any type of traction with with trying to become a muralist. I couldn't find walls. I was not getting accepted to the things I was applying for. Um, money was, you know, getting incredibly low. It was the first, one of the first times in my life I saw triple zeros in my bank account and I was freaking out. And I thought about, I thought about just leaving it in the rear view and getting that email that I, I was going to be one of the artists painting out in the middle of painting out in the middle of Centennial Park amongst like 15,000 people. It just kind of gave me, it gave me that juice to, to keep on pushing. And also after I got done with it, the money that I earned from that, I was able to fulfill a childhood dream of going to Tokyo. So yeah, that, that was a, that was a very big moment for me because it, it, it told me that what I'm, what I believed in was possible. I just had to wait it out. So, yeah. Yeah, I love a good dreams coming true story. I'm really here for the heart, <laughs> heart wrenching ones. So I'm um, trying to pull tears out, you know. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I, I think it's really interesting that how you said like Tokyo is a lifelong dream. Do you mm -hmm. feel like, do you have cultural influences for your? For your process like do you have musical influences like how do you get started oh yes <laughs> are you i feel like we'll need like longer than an hour if i list out everything but just hit the high yeah. points <laughs> the <know>? high points <laughs> yeah the, the high points for me um as far as influences go uh tokyo was was always like a huge huge influence for me um i just love the whole design of the city like it, it is one of the most beautifully designed and functional cities when it comes to just people like it's it's just crazy it's it's always been something that's like been crazy to me and also they have like the the city of tokyo just doesn't have a fear of color like it is a bright a vibrant city but it's not too vibrant to where your eyes can't struggle to like to to see or adjust to it, what's going on. It's, it's perfectly, it's just perfectly like color palette. It's, uh, mm. um, <laughs> uh, but, but musical influences. Yes. Uh, uh, NERD, which is, you know, Pharrell's band, um, Kanye West, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm trying to separate art from the artist, but uh, you can't. Um, let me see. Kid Cudi, uh, Lupe Fiasco, Elton John, Carol King, um, Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder, definitely. Um, one of the most immaculate artists of, of all time. Um, I'm really huge into like uh, city, de city design. So, okay. you know, I've always told myself, uh, and if the murals ever slow down, I'm probably just going to go into trying to design cities. Um, so I, I follow, I, I follow like the teachings of like Jane Jacobs. Um, uh, one of my favorite documentaries is Urbanize. Um, yeah, I, I try to pull from everything. Um, old complex magazines, which I have a, a large amount pretty much every okay. single one all the way in the back. So, yes. <laughs> so behind you, is this your studio space? Yes, um, this is this is like one part of my studio space. Um, I have all my, my different reference books back there from 
uh, Aaron James Draplin, which is a wonderful graphic designer. Um, I have uh, one of Pharrell's books. I have a couple of uh, streetwear anthology uh, books that they do every single year called All Gone. Um, Hiroshi F Fujiwara, um, old complex books, but also books for, um, for, for, for self-help and learning about learning about my, my inner peace and, and my mind and all the different things like that. So yeah, it's, that's, that's just a little bit of my studio and also a GameCube and a brand new Nintendo Switch. Okay. I love the Switch. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes, Super Smash Brothers. What are your, your top games right now? Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. Uh, it, it was one of my favorite games when I was growing up. And, um, oh, yeah, I've, I've been playing that. I've been playing that like crazy over the past two days. So, yeah. Nice. I, I felt like a little kid again, staying up until 4 o'clock playing Kirby. It's okay. That's the best days. Yeah, it you know? was, it was, it was you wonderful. You got snacks, you got games. <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, someone asked, how would you go about getting into designing cities? Do you have an approach for that future plan? Oh, man. Um, yes. I, I try to approach it. I try to approach it in the same way that, um, that I feel like some of the, the best design cities are approached is by getting granular and dealing with people like not just dealing with not not just dealing with it from like a high level approach but i want to try to interact with people and figure out ways to where you can make cities more walkable because i feel like walkable cities are, are honestly some of the most beautiful cities because you get a hodgepodge of, of people together existing um it's the reasons why you know, New York, New, certain parts of New York are amazing. It's the reason why certain parts of Tokyo are amazing. It's the reason why even certain parts of Atlanta are amazing. It's because you get to experience that beautiful mix of people. Um, and I would love to tackle things like public transport because that, as a, as a bike rider, mm, the, the, the type of love that isn't shown to bike riders when... <laughs> Honestly, if, if there was more encouragement just for doing things like that, we would have a, a better city life because more people will be coming up here on their bikes instead of trying to search for parking. Parking takes too much time. Mm -mm. Parking is a definite time yeah. suck here in Atlanta. Yes. Yeah. No need for parking Even garages. No. More beautiful places for rails. businesses. Exactly. More bike rails. I'm not going to uh, lie. I am definitely a sucker for trying to find parking as much as I would love to be eco-friendly. <laughs> oh, that's real. Okay, I... Baby steps. Baby steps. There we go. I'm, you know, one day I'll get a scooter and I'll live my best old lady life on a scooter. Yes. And then I can scoot behind you on your bicycle, you know. There we go. I'm like, yeah. well, by that time, I'll probably be on a hover round. One of those like really Oh, okay, old, my yeah. bad. That's so all I want. I wasn't prepared for it. That's all I want. I just want one of those little old people hover rounds. That's, that's it. They look so fun. <laughs> oh man <laughs> it'll be a good life I, you should like put a horn in it and all the things oh yeah put your gonna... favorite song mm -hmm. that can be your horn yeah i'm gonna if... paint it yes okay mm -hmm. put more more of your artwork out there drive by made by george f baker the third boom <laughs> <laughs> So I have a, a few like questions about like your actual space. Mm -hmm. It's set up really nicely where like, you know, you have obvious divides. I know city life sometimes for some of us artists gets a little crumbled where like, personally, my art closet is what was supposed to be my clothing closet. And I decided mm -hmm. that my artwork just needed a better space than my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> but for you, how are you? how are you keeping it so organized? Cause you're obviously working a lot. You're constantly on the move. Yeah. Um, like, is that out of habit that the space is kept this way or okay? No, that that's not out of habit. It, it gets incredibly messy in here. Um, when I'm in the midst of a project, I want to be able to like see as many things as possible. Uh, I'm I'm never been a, mi a minimalist at all. I don't. I, I like to say that I'm a maximalist. 
uh, and especially when I'm in the midst of, of creating, there's stuff all over the place. Um, so I actually just got done with a project. So you're probably not going to be seeing like before we got on this, uh, before we got on this live, there were enamel paints all over the place. Um, <laughs> there's papers laid all out. And I was like, you know what? I'm presenting myself to the world. Let me, let me clean it up. And plus that project is done. So normally it's just a, it's a process of incredibly clean project starts incredibly messy and then ends and we're we're back we're back to clean again so <laughs> nice um I, i'll move away from like the cleanliness of your room in that case i appreciate the setup though with all of the posters and the works by other artists in the background thank you but yeah you know you gotta have some representation eventually we'll move past my one screening will expand for Sam Flax's purposes. But um, no, I, I guess I just have like, mm -hmm. yeah, where's our thing? I forgot my question. It's okay. I wrote them down. Exactly. Um, yeah, prepared. Remember that A plus on this live stream. That's what we're striving for. <laughs> yeah. Uh, while you're working and you're doing all these things, I know you have projects coming up. Like you said, the Marta piece coming up. Um, I know you mm -hmm. just did something off of Peachtree. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Would yes um oh man the oh the the piece off of peace tree do you mean the um oh man why am i the in light exhibition is what oh I'm yes yes the in light exhibition wow yes that that piece was um that piece is actually still currently up so uh, it was a beautiful process and a beautiful project that was kind of presented to me by um the good folks at Dashboard and Mint. Um, and essentially they, they wanted me to um, develop the main logo type and also animation for uh, the, the build, for the exhibition. I had to make sure I get the words right. For the, for the art exhibition for 10 local Atlanta artists. And that would be featured on three uh, large scale digital billboards all around town. So one of them is on uh, Peachtree, um, right above Peachtree Center Station. The other one is on the Reverb Hotel uh, over near Castleberry Hills. And lastly, uh, the final one is on Marietta, which is right on the corner of Marietta and Ted Turner. Um, that process was, was incredibly fun because they, they gave me full range to just draw whatever I wanted. Like I'm norm normally, you know, coming from like a graphic design process, normally the client tells you like, this is exactly what I want. Make it look like this. Uh, please fit this round peg into the square hole. Um, <laughs> but, with, but with Dashboard, they, they gave me the freedom to say, we trust you. We trust wherever you're going to go. And Man, it it was a it was a beautiful piece that that came together that I honestly wouldn't have even been able to to finish if it wasn't for the incredible help of a, a good friend of mine, Ari. Um, seriously, saved my life. I have no idea how to do animation. Um, you actually got to see me first person struggle, and the 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 moans that were coming out of my mouth was not pleasurable. It, uh, and she immediately came to my to my rescue and and really produced really helped produce and bring that that project home um so ari hey wherever you are i hope that you're here um i hope that you're getting all the love yeah i see your a yes <laughs> yeah it was it was an amazing project so <laughs> nice so in turn I know like you have to collaborate as you go through these different mm -hmm. processes. Do you have a dream collaboration that we should be on the lookout for? Oh man. Dream collaboration is, um, I am going to create a sneaker collaboration. Um, okay. I'm, you know, I got to claim it. Got to just say, I am going to, um, I don't care what, whatever brand it is. I don't even care if it's Skechers. I believe in myself as a designer that I can make those shoes hot. So 
whoever whoever wants to give me a sneaker collaboration, whether it's helping to develop it from the ground up or if you just want to give me a silhouette, great. Um, I'm fine with either. So, yeah. Yeah, All that's right. that's my dream collaboration. <laughs> that's a very exciting one. I love this, like, interplay that you have between people's personal clothing and then this public experience with these big big murals yeah um yeah. thank you <laughs> yeah i'm here i'm here for the to just hype you up you know Stop as it. like mellowed out as i am <laughs> um so we only have like 15 ish minutes before it kind of cuts us off so before we dip out we've got a couple of people still watching right now if anyone mm -hmm. wants to drop any comments there's a little box underneath with a question mark if you click that you can send comments directly to us um, or if you want to leave it in the comments, for the most part, we can see all your comments yeah. too. Yeah. But and once again, I'm 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 an open I'm an open book, so you can ask me anything. Um, I will give you my honest truth. So hey. Yeah. I'm open. <laughs> there you go. The yes. library of George F. Baker the Third is yes. open. Open it up. And um, <laughs> <laughs> while we're waiting on any questions that might come in, mm -hmm. um, I just mm -hmm. want to touch on like one more project and then we'll kind of sign off and stuff. I know you've been doing, oh, someone has a question. Oh. I'll go back to mine later because it's, okay. it's, you know, uh, it says, have you thought about reaching out to Georgia Tech Urban Planning Program? Oh, wow. No, I haven't because I did not know that that existed, but I am taking that note now. Um, Brooke, uh, yeah, I uh, hope your name is Brooke. Make sure I'm saying okay. that right. Yep. Okay. Look, thank you. I will do that today. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, man. Thank you. Once again, people. People. So I was going to ask you, um, mm -hmm. as we're still waiting for questions and things like that, if they come in, in doing the live drawings with ABB Gallery, uh -huh. how, what's that like? I know I'm, I can feel like some people are very nervous having someone like literally an entire crowd over their shoulder watching, you know, how do you manage to keep that focus in this like time restrained art piece that you're doing with them? It is stressful. It is. It, well, for me, it, it, it starts off being incredibly stressful um, because I'm like, for me personally, the eyes, the eyes on the piece don't really, don't really matter to me um, anymore. Um, I, I've, I've grown out of that, but I, I feel like it's, it's like the, the time pressure and then also the variety of new people that are coming in. I get ADD with that, with that type of stuff. So I'm like, oh man, what is that person wearing? Oh man. Oh, I know that guy. Hey, what's up? Hey, hey, nice to see you. And so it, it almost becomes like, <laughs> It, it just becomes a very weird place for me to actually create because I want to like pay as much attention to what I'm doing, but I'm also even more interested in the people that are coming in. Um, but it's always a fun process. It, it's an incredibly fun process uh, to do because I, I try to like, I don't try to give myself too much leeway on like what design I'm going to create. I just try to like, you know, maybe, maybe like 10, 10 to 30 minutes before I'm like, okay, this is kind of where my mind is right now. This is what I'm thinking about. And I just kind of allow myself to explore in front of people. So if it looks great, cool. If it doesn't, I just made a thing in front of people. Okay. That's, but, yeah. <laughs> you made a thing. I made I like a thing. That. Yeah. So uh, we have a couple of questions coming in now. Someone asked, I'll click on it so you can see. It says, what are your top five anime shows of all time that might inspire your work? Okay. Okay. Um, one of the first things I ever watched was uh, oh, was uh, Toonami back in, like, the early 2000s. And it was, you know, of course, Dragon Ball Z. But right after that was a show called Ronin Warriors that not a lot of people remember. But I definitely do. Uh, still have a lot of love for it. Yu Yu Hakusho. Um, let me see. That's another one I really love. Uh, who? Oh, Case Closed. Case Closed is a very underrated anime. Uh, I miss it. Um, I know that they're still showing episodes. I, I gotta gotta catch up. And then uh, lastly, 
Um, whew, I'll throw a movie in there, Akira. Uh, the, okay. the, yeah, Akira was not only one of the, the best instrumental soundtracks that you'll ever get from a film, but it is just absolutely gorgeous. So, yeah. Nice. <laughs> here. Okay. We've got a couple of Case Closed fans underneath, which is awesome. Um, I see. Let's see. Someone <laughs> else. Oh, Ariana asks, what's a new technique that you want to pick up? Possibly watercolors, question mark. Hmm. Um, good question. A new medium or technique that I want to pick up is actually uh, getting into... I guess more industrial design, like toy design. Um, okay. I want to. I want to create vinyl toys. Uh, I I want to actually like make sculptural pieces that people can like interact with. Um, I've always wanted to make a bench for some reason. Um, <laughs> just, just like a like a sitting bench, like in a park. Yeah, or, I just okay. I've, I've always wanted. I I feel like I can create something really beautiful for people. Um, okay. and so I, I want to create a bench for people and, and like a very beautifully designed, somebody just said, a, a, a George F. Baker, the third Lego set. Yes. Cause I'm a huge fan okay. of Lego. Another huge inspiration. I still have my Legos. So yeah, no. <laughs> that's the new medium. All right. Um, and then we've got two more questions and then we'll close off. Someone asks, where can they purchase some of your prints if you have any? Mm. Oh, man. See, the crazy thing is right now I don't have any prints, but I keep on getting told I need to have prints. So I think that's what, a sign. It's a sign. But I will let you know the best place to purchase um, things from me. I'm actually setting up a site. Or I'm setting up a, a shop site on my regular uh, portfolio site, which is GFB3. That's T H R E E dot com. So <laughs> yes, I will stop playing, Eric. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> and um <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm going to I'm actually gonna be working on that this weekend. So it should be up by next week. So I'll start putting some prints together since since I'm getting told I have to. <laughs> yeah. Do you still have t shirts available for people as well? Or yes. is that okay? Yes, Where I still are those have available. They're going to be on the uh, the shop page. Um, okay. They're going to be on the shop page on my portfolio website. Um, so I, the the shirts that I do have right now is um, or I have are the Make Friends T-shirt, which is basically pulling some of the design that I that I made for the Make Friends mural. Um, but I also still have the uh, With Socks design that I worked on with the. You know, aforementioned company with socks. Beautiful company. Every single um, every single sock that you purchase, they donate another pair out to the homeless. Um, so if you're interested in buying those, those are also up on that site too. Um, and then I'm also working with this great group called Comfy Art, um, and they have some of my they have some of my artwork on there too. So if you want to purchase all of that, will literally be in a link in my bio. So, yeah. <laughs> and guys, for those of you who don't know, we will link to George's Instagram account so you can click there and reference back. And the whole live stream will be available later in case you forget and need to know how to spell everything out. Yes. So um, I think we've literally got six minutes left. Oh, wow. We, someone asked where we can see your art. Again, that's on his Instagram that we will mm -hmm. link on this live stream. And then again on his website which will have a link in his bio. So our last question is right here. Mm. Uh, how much does music inspire or influence your art? And do you ever see yourself collating with major artists? Mm. Oh, yes. Um, music definitely inspires every single art piece that I do, because not only is it stuff that's playing in the background, but it's also uh, different ideas and, and even like color palettes that I'll reference. Um, are literally coming from all the music that I consume. Um, one of my pieces, one of my pieces specifically was, um, I, I kind of took the same type of color, color palette that I saw on uh, this, this Stevie Wonder performance over in, I think he was in Germany doing like 
he was doing like the voice vocoder. It was it was so crazy, but I just took a still from it and took all the colors from it and just put into the design. As far as collaborating with artists, with a major artist, I would absolutely love to, absolutely love to. One of my favorite artists of all time is Ghostface Killer. So if he can, if he would want to have me on to make something, I would gladly do it. Uh, no questions asked, full stop on everything. So yeah, um, I'm like, shoot, I would even love to produce uh, to produce a, a, a major artist entire concert design and layout and stage design and merchandise like yes so if you know somebody nice we out. might have to yes. tag him <laughs> underneath to <laughs> be like hey do. future collabs <laughs> um, well we yes. are literally about to be done so guys don't forget to check out george at gfb3 Again, I will link it down below so you can find it. George, thank you so much for oh. joining us and doing this hour. Oh, and again, nice. shout out to Sam Slacks for hosting this. What's in yes. my studio will be available on our IGTV um, and is co-hosted or sponsored by IAF Media. Yes. So again, yeah. everyone will be tagged below. You guys can all check them out. And if you're looking for any of the supplies that George mentioned as far as pasta markers and the Montana Black or Gold Spray Paints, Sam's Flex is open for curbside pickup or in-store shopping. Just please wear your mask and be respectful of everyone working. Yes. Awesome. Thank yes. you, no, George. We will thank you. See you. Can I say one more thing? Just to yeah, you? Say what I Happy want. birthday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank happy you. Happy birthday. Please, everybody, send her a happy birthday. It is Krupa. She's working on her birthday. She needs to be celebrated. She is wonderful, <laughs> beautiful human being. Nothing but sunshine everywhere she goes. So, yes. I appreciate you so much. Look, but, I um, hope everybody is typing cakes into the comment section right now. Just for you. Nice. Thank <laughs> you. I uh, do love some cake. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> We're going to end this off. Again, guys, thank you, everyone, for joining. We will be back in another week. <laughs> thank you, guys. Y'all have a great day. <laughs>